The environment in Logic Pro uh, gives you the ability to create some complex MIDI effects. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. First thing we want to do is create a software instrument. Let's go software instrument. And we'll go ahead and open the library. And we're going to go to synthesizers. Let's get a brassy synth. Analog synth brass, that's perfect. Let's bring the volume down a little bit on it. Okay, so we have our instrument. So what I want to do is I want to manipulate this instrument so that um, I want to put an arpeggiator on this instrument. And what an arpeggiator does is it gives you just a random um, note that's a random series of notes that are synced up to the metronome. Um, and I'll show you exactly how that works right now. Um, <clears throat> I have on screen set two the mixer environment. So this is the environment window. Um, so uh, with my layer selection up here, I can either have it be all objects or MIDI objects or clicks and ports, just like I showed you in the last tutorial. We want to be on the mixer layer. And you can see here that we have our instrument channel. Um, so what I want to do is by going up to new here in the environment, down here in this little section there's um, six different uh, MIDI effects that you can that you can use. And I want to grab the arpeggiator and so I'm just going to drag it down here just for the visual. And over here in the inspector you can set these parameters um, to be whatever you want. Um, right now, it's default to just um, arpeggiate upward, but I want to make it random. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a 16th note arpeggio. And uh, let's do two octaves. Okay, so what that actually sounds like, I'll show you in just a moment. But what we have to do is once we have our arpeggiator here in the environment, you need to cable it into the actual instrument itself. So you're basically taking this thing, this arpeggiator um, icon or this object, and now this little arrow here, when you click on that, it'll show you, it creates a little patch cable, which you want to then click, hold, and drag onto the actual instrument that you want to arpeggiate. And then you let go, and you can see that you have a patch now that goes into this particular instrument. So let's go back over to the Arrange window. So what I need to do now is I need to create a new track that actually has that arpeggiator in it, because I need to select the arpeggiator and arm it. So I'm going to go up here to my plus sign and create an external MIDI track, and go ahead and open the library. And what it does is it creates just a, a generic general MIDI device. But what I want to do is I want to change its assignment. So I want to go over here to Other Objects. And you'll see here that it gives you the list of objects that are currently in your environment. And I want to use the arpeggiator. So I click on that. And so the arpeggiator now is armed. So when I play the keyboard, it's going to play this synthesizer that I have on this particular channel because I have it cabled from the arpeggiator into the software instrument. Now, it will not arpeggiate until I actually start Logic up. So if I'm holding and then I start Logic, The arpeggiator needs an actual clock in order to be able to arpeggiate. So you would actually record any events onto this actual arpeggiator track. So if I hit the R key, it'll start recording. Three, four. And so there it is. Okay, so that's how you would apply an arpeggiator. Um, let's go ahead and delete that. Now what I want to do is just show you another example. Um, let's go ahead and take that patch off. And you can remove patches simply by clicking back on 
the actual um, object itself and then just patching it back into itself. Now what I want to do is I want to create a chord memorizer. Chord memorizer is a kind of a cool way of creating clusters of notes while you play a single note. And the way you set the chord memorizer up is by double clicking on it. And it gives you this dual keyboard display. So I'm going to say every time I hit the C, I want it to play a minor 7 chord. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and patch this now before I actually start setting these chords so that I can hear what I'm actually playing. So I'm going to go ahead and patch this into the synth brass patch or software instrument. And I go back over here. So now, rather than using the arpeggiator, you'll notice now that the chord memorizer shows up in my object list over here. So I'm going to click on chord memorizer. So now it changes the selection in the actual track list. So now when I play this, it's going to play the synth because of the way I have it patched from the chord memorizer into the synth. So I'm going to double click on this again and open up the memorizer. So now um, I've set the root note so I can use the listen button here and I can decide that I want it to be a minor 7 chord. So I play the entire chord. So now every time I play that one note it's going to play all four notes that I've just created in the chord memorizer. I'm going to do the same thing with the D. Now click on listen, play D minor 7, and write up the list. Let's go to F, and then G. Okay, so we click OK, and we're going to go ahead and name this now. We can name these um, objects, and we're going to call this minor seven chords. Okay, so when I go back over to my arrange window, you'll notice that the object changed to minor seven chords over here. And so it did also in the track list. So now when I play those notes, those single notes on the keyboard, creates kind of a very cool sound. Now, here's another interesting thing we can do. We can take, and I'm going to click on this patch cable, and then patch it back into, so to eliminate that patch. And I want to patch down the arpeggiator into the chord, the minor 7 chord transform, chord memorizer rather, and then patch this into the instrument. So now, when I play this arpeggiator, it's going to patch those notes into the chord memorizer and then into the actual instrument. Let's go back to the arrange window. So I want to select my arpeggiator since that's in the first of the patch chain. So now, when I start Logic Up, it's going to play, it's going to arpeggiate the chords. So you begin to get a sense of the usefulness of something like this, especially if you're creating tracks that are heavily sequenced. And um, you can create some very interesting um, musical landscapes and uh, sound beds using all of the effect possibilities inside the environment. And there are a number of others, a uh, few others here that you can use, but they all basically um, patch and are created in the same fashion and then are accessed over here inside your object list um, on a uh, MIDI track.